maybe we will read uh, uh, about through verse 15. That's a lot of reading. 15 verses. Revelation 11. There was given unto me a reed like an unto a rod. The angel stood saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. The court which is without, the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty-two months. I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days or twelve hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These are two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouths and devour their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heavens that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues, with all plagues, as often as they will. And will they have shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pits to make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified, which really is Jerusalem. And they of the people, nationalities and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, make war, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets torment them that dwell on the earth. No more. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God enters into them. They stood up on their feet. Great fear fell upon them which saw them. They heard a voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up here. They sent it up to heaven in a cloud. Their enemies beheld them. Same hour there was a great earthquake. The tenth part of the city fell. And the earthquake were slayed. And in the earthquake were slayed of men 7,000. And the remnant was affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. The seventh angel sounded. There were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ or his anointed, he shall reign forever and ever. Holy Father, I thank you for this word. Hide it inside of me right now. Cause me to have the wisdom, divine revelation, and unction, and the anointing to speak this word. Cleanse me by the blood. Wash me by the word. Purify my heart by faith in Jesus Christ and I'll cause the commandments of God to dwell in us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to make a, a brief comment here on the first uh, couple of verses here about the temple of God because I disagree with the denomination's theory of the temple. 
as I disagree with most books I've read pertaining to this and denominational ideas about this. And I think that when I give my explanations for it, that you will more agree with me because they don't have no scripture whatsoever. I want you to notice, there was given unto me a reed locking under a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Now, a reed was so like a bamboo cane. Talk about you would call it in our country a bamboo cane, but it only grew about eight or nine feet tall. And the Jews, the old anxious people, always measured by a reed. They didn't have uh, rulers. And they didn't have tape to measure with. And a cubit was from your elbow down to where your fingers could come up and touch the end of it like that. That was one cubit. From right here. It's about here. You know, a man had an average arm. Of course, a midget, you'd probably have to measure his, his whole arm. Or a short person with short arm. But I'm talking about the average man. So he said, measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. And the court which is without, the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Well, you know uh, what the natural temple God said about the natural temple, the temple that Solomon built, the only the high priest could go in to the veil. The Gentiles had to stop in the first part. As they entered into the temple, they had to stop. They couldn't go no further. And even the woman, a woman could not pass that point. Only the priest could go to the altar and all men couldn't. Only a special dedication. They had to have a certain kind of dedication. And a woman could know where to all. She was like the Gentile. Approach. And then if a man or a priest, they had to have a certain kind of a dedication to even approach the altar. And then the high priest, which is without sin, I mean, he was totally proving himself could go in to where God was. But that's not what John was measuring. John knew about all of this. John was the one that taught that God is in us. That God was in Christ. And Christ is in us. If you receive Jesus Christ, you receive Him that's in Jesus Christ. He's the one that taught that the works that I do, it's not I, but the Father live in me, does the work. 
So John, he wasn't amazed at the temple because he wrote this about 90 A.D. And the temple was destroyed 20 years before. Totally demolished in 70 A.D. So he was told by God to measure the real temple. He knew Paul's teachings. That Paul taught that you the temple of God. He knew that God no longer dwelled in temples of stone. Well, if God still dwelled in temples of stone, He would not have allowed Solomon's temple to be destroyed. And for as the measure and read, you can go back to Amos, Zacharias, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, almost all prophets when they was given special visions. God would give them a measure and read. So this was a, 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 a thing that prophets done in the Old Testament, many of their staff was a masonry. It wasn't just a stick. Some of them was a stick. But their staff, they always carried a staff. Most of them was a masonry. And many of their visions. You'll hear Amos, you'll hear Ezekiel, you'll hear Jeremiah, you'll hear Zechariah. And there's no doubt in my mind when John saw the temple, he was familiar with the Scriptures. He lined up the book of Revelation with over 300 different prophecies. He didn't deviate from a single Old Testament prophet. He lined up the book of Revelation from Isaiah to Malachi knowing that God had spoke over 300 times of this great mystery of woe and terror and sorrow was going to be poured out upon the earth and the plagues. So he was in perfect harmony. Now John was measuring and trying to show us what kind of a dedication it's going to take to be the temple of God. You know God's temples today don't have no dedication. God was showing him the temple. I'm going to tell you something. The temple has... The Jews is rebuilding the temple. The, the Tower of Babylon is being rebuilt. But... To fulfill prophecy, this don't have to happen. Because the Antichrist is not going to sit in the temple. The mystery of iniquity does already work. The temple that the Antichrist is going to set in is in the body. You the temple. Paul plainly explained that the temple of God is now. Us. And he plainly said, This is where the man of sin is going to dwell. The mystery of iniquity is going to work. It's in the temple. And be revealed in the temple. All that oppose God are going to inhabit the Antichrist spirit. John warned us to beware of the Antichrist spirit, that they were already here. So, John was describing the temple and the temple of God was open in heaven. There was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. There were lightning and voicing and thundering and earthquake and great hell. Again here in the 19th verse. He is seeing. 
the real temple. The church. John was seeing the Christian church here in Revelation 11. He was measuring the church. The church, not the building. The members of Christ. Not the stone, and the brick, and the wood. He was measuring the church. And the church is going to be according to the qualification that Solomon's temple, that was only a type of the church. That was the type of the temple of God of the last days. So he was measuring the church that's the reason in the New Testament church, Paul allowed women to minister and to have certain ministries. But there were certain ministries he did not allow them to have. Why? Because they believed that God's spiritual church, God's spiritual temple was according if the Old Testament was a schoolmaster was a type and a shadow of that to come. Then when he said, I saw the temple. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, the church. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Now how many know what was the ark of covenant? How many know what was in the ark of covenant? How many know where they kept the Ark of Covenant? In the temple. How many know what was in the Ark of Covenant? I ain't hearing y'all. The Ten Commandments. So, John is seeing this Revelation church, a church with the Ark of Covenant, the Holy Ghost. We know the Holy Ghost. Is the spiritual. It is the Ark of Covenant. Today, there'll never be a natural Ark of Covenant again. Once the Holy Ghost was poured out and Malachi said, God will suddenly come to His temple. That meant from here on through after the day of Pentecost that the church is the temple. So John was measuring the church. And he was giving us an idea what the church was going to be like. It's going to be according to the specification of the temple. That every Tom, Dick, and Harry is not going to enter in without dedication. The priest had to be dedicated. The minister. He said, they that bear the vessels of the Lord is going to bear them on sanctified shoulders. You know, Israel tried that one time. John knew it. Israel tried to bring the Ark of Covenant back with just a bunch of undedicated men. Once they touched them, they died. They brought the Ark of Covenant back and had it in Israel. Had it in their camp. But it didn't work. So they didn't bring it back like they're supposed to bring it back. They went out there and they lost 85,000 men one day. They lost 30,000 men one day. They lost 10,000 men one day. And they began to say, what's wrong? We've got the Ark of Covenant here. We're losing. God said, as long as we had the Ark of Covenant with us, we wouldn't lose these battles. Why the enemy stole it. But they stole something they didn't know what to do with. Man, I'm talking about the old Diana images, the old gods. They had their gods. They fell. And they put them back up and they fell again. The gods, the heathen gods couldn't even stand up. They'd wake up and the gods would be fell down. And they sent it to another part of the country. And when it got there, everything went crazy. And they began to have plagues and evil and 
Father, they said, we've got to get rid of this thing. Why, these charismatic don't know what to do with the Holy Ghost. This modern church don't want to do with the Holy Ghost. You can't take the Holy Ghost and put it in an old bottle. You can't put it in an old unsanctified vessel. You get the Holy Ghost in an unsanctified vessel and it'll kill you. That's what's the matter with some of you now. You get out of here, you cuss, you have your temper fit. You ain't, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah, I am. You got a curse. The Holy Ghost is a curse to a man that don't live right. It ain't a blessing to you if you out here living any old kind of undedicated life and the Spirit of God's in you. It ain't going to do nothing but bring you curse. You got to be holy for the Holy Ghost to live in you. You got to be sanctified for the Holy Ghost to dwell and live and be a blessing and stand up against the enemy and fight your battle and be greater in you than he that's in the world. Get out here and find fault and talk about folks and criticize folks and hate folks and despise folks and can't stand folks. Well, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I don't like you. Well, you still ain't got the Holy Ghost. If you had the Holy Ghost, you'll love me. You won't hate nobody. Man, this will make you love your enemies. Much less another brother you can't stand or sister. I can't stand these Christians. They get to know them and they say, I can't stand so and so. I don't like so and so. I despise so and so. Well, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will give you another covenant, which is the Holy Ghost. And if you say you love Him and don't keep His commandments, John said, you are a liar. Get my tape over on the commandments. Fear God and keep it. You got it? Shook you up, didn't you? You ain't got the Holy Ghost. First thing Jesus said, if you love me, when He first introduced us to the Holy Ghost and told us He's going to give it to us, He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll see to it. I'll send you another comforter. He will not give a commandment breaker the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So what's this I got? I don't know what you got. But I know what you ain't got. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. The church bell ain't got the Holy Ghost. This adulterous and lying and worldly and cheating church world has not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is at the most sacred thing they are about God. The Spirit of God is the most sacred thing they are. It's, the God, it's God's Ark of Covenant. That's what God had in mind when He made the Ark of Covenant. That was the type of the Holy Ghost. Are you sure? Absolutely. Why wow, when the when they stole the Ark of Covenant from Israel? No Eli. Sitting on the wagon. They come and said, My God, Eli, they have stole the Ark of Covenant. He fell off the wagon, broke his neck, and died. Like that. And his daughter in law was carrying a baby, and she miscarried right quick. And had it right there. She wasn't in labor. She was about eight and a half months or seven months. But she wasn't in labor. And when she heard the Ark of Covenant was stolen, she had a miscarriage. But the baby lived. You know what they named it? Incubus. Ain't that a name? Name that boy Incubus. You know what the word Ichabod means? The Spirit of God has departed. Not the Ark of Covenant, but the Spirit of God has departed. That's what God said in the 60s to us, that the Spirit of God was going to depart from the churches. And that's exactly what has happened. John is measured the temple of God, which is the church. 
God's going to restore His temple. God's going to restore His commandments back in His church. All ten of them. Hallelujah. That's good, ain't it? Hallelujah. So if that don't convince you what the temple is, he wasn't measuring the temple because the temple has been destroyed 20 years. And it's never been built back. They're trying to build it back now, but it ain't built back. They're building it. So 2,000 years here, who is John Sin? The temple, which is the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ. You saw the Ark of Covenant, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and the commandments of God in it. Hallelujah. I hope that explains John's maze in the temple. And I will give now I want you to I want to make a little comment right here. This forty two months period here is going to come up three times. This 42 months is going to come up three times in Revelation. It comes up here in the 11th chapter. It's going to come up again in the 12th chapter. And it's going to come up again in the 13th chapter. 42 months. Of the most terrible horror that the world has ever known. Brother Mayo, we're going to have to have prophets. I don't know about you, we're going to have to have Elijah. We're going to have to have a Moses kind of man. We're going to have to have the two witnesses. The hickey bop preacher ain't going to do it. Hickey bop preacher ain't going to work. We're going to have to have some holy men. Men that still see like John saw. Men that still, the Word of God, I preached the other night on, the Word of God came to John in the wilderness. We're going to have to have men that the Word of God will come to you. Women that the Word of God will come to you and you'll quit preaching isms and sins. Everybody's got their isms and sins. And y'all stay a while. I'm just now getting my foundation laid for the message. The two witnesses. See, God's going to raise up out of the temple, out of the church, His anointing. You know, I received a vision one time of the two olive trees. 1966. And they came up. And I saw these olives. And I saw this in recent years, maybe a few years back. And I seen these little olives as they begin to grow and it was full of olives. You know, olives tree, the limbs start so like a palm. Way up here. Don't start down like an apple or peach. It starts way up here. And it's limbs. It's a good 18, 15 or 18, 20 feet before the limb. And I saw these olives. And they were going to get them great old big black olives. That's the kind I like. How many like them big old black olives? Man, I tell you. Get them out of that vinegar. Man, I can just think of a lot of things I could eat with them right now. <laughs> you go about three months out, something to eat, you'll, be, you'll eat peanuts. You'll eat a lot of things. You'll think of a lot of things. Eat when you do eat, you don't even think of one of them. Have you ever been fasting? You're born. I eat. I'm gonna eat this. And I'm gonna eat that. When you eat, I'm gonna get me a big old hamburger. I saw somebody eating a hamburger. Down. I said, "Glory, Hallelujah, praise God." And I eat. I'm gonna get me the biggest cheeseburger I can eat. I'm gonna slap the two pieces of cheese in it and a big piece of onion right in the middle. And a piece of cheese on the bottom and a piece of cheese on the top and a big piece of onion in the middle. And I'm going to get it on a whole wheat bun and I'm going to eat it. I'm going to 
going to get me some French fries. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Any of y'all fasting? Make you hungry. But I've seen these olives and great old big ones like a big old plum. And the limbs, these two olive trees, they were just loaded down with olives. And all of a sudden, I've seen those big old blue olives, black olives, they are come into a face and a mouth. And all of a sudden, I heard that olive prophesying. And God spoke to me, said that not only are there going to be these two prophets, but they're going to be the Spirit. And I'm fixing to talk to you about a couple of men that for sure it was a Bible, biblical truth that their spirit didn't die, didn't go back to heaven with them. You know, some folks think when a man dies, his spirit goes back to heaven. Well, I'm going to talk about a couple of men that their ministry and their anointing didn't stop. When you read about Jeremiah's death, you read about the end of his ministry. You read about Ezekiel's death, you read about the end of his ministry. You read about Paul's death. Paul said, I'm fixing the part. I've finished my ministry. You read about Peter's death. Peter said, Soon I'll depart out of this tabernacle and go be with the Lord. Read about Stephen's. I was taught, telling my son, oh, Brother Archer, he's doing some good preaching here. Man, that was good today. You don't know what I said right there and listen. Man, I thought, Jesus, I want to get out there and help him a little bit. That good preacher. You ought to be here tomorrow evening and hear that good preacher. Make you want to fast and pray. And I got my manuscript from my 40 day, my book on 40 day fast, and he read a couple of chapters that while ago. Man, I tell you, he will preach tomorrow. <laughs> you better get you some of them. Good eating over at that little eating thing. But when I get through in the morning, because you won't want to be eating after that. Well, look at Stevens. I said, look here at this great man, Stevens. Man, he was some preacher. I said, don't you know he would have made a preacher if he hadn't got killed? His ministry was so short. Man, I was reading that seventh chapter... Acts, how that man stood up and preached in Acts 6 and Acts 7. Man, it'll stir you up. Well, that's the end of it. Don't you know he'd have made a writer? Man, he'd have probably would have top Paul's ministry. Been right there with Paul. But when he found Philip or Thomas was a great preacher. When they found him with a dagger in his back. When Philip was burned at the stake, that was the end. But there's three men in the Bible. Their ministry didn't stop when they deceased from this world. Hallelujah. Handala bahaukayola basaya. Thank you, Jesus. So this 42 months is mentioned three times in Revelations and once in Daniel. It's definitely going to be this 42 months. And I'm afraid it's a lot closer than what y'all believe. 
We're going to have to have the kind of prophets around. You're going to find that these prophets, their ministry didn't just start here at this 42 months like some theologians claim because they were already here when John was measuring the church. They were already here. They were already here before this 42 months. But you're going to hear a lot about them. Well, look here. I will give power unto my two witnesses. That meant they're here right now. John wasn't introduced and saying they're coming. He just now got in his revelation vision to let the world know that they're going to be these two prophets. There's no doubt in my mind, my personal belief, these prophets was here long before this. At least three and a half or four years. If the revela if the great tribulation period was to be a seven years period, which there's no definite word on that, it could go ten, it could go fifteen, it could go six, seven, it's a period of time. There's no doubt in my mind these two prophets is going to be here during this whole time, I personally believe before the seals is to be loose that these prophets are going to introduce them. Because you're going to find out their ministry brings about brings about the kind of plagues that we're going to have under these seals and these trumps and these seven last angels. There were one or two prophets in the Bible that had that kind of ministry. Man, I've read Jeremiah so much, he's, he's a favorite prophet of mine. Ezekiel's a favorite prophet of mine. Joel, Amos, Malachi, Isaiah, but none of these prophets. Brought the kind of plagues. You notice here he said, I give power unto my two prophets, my two witnesses, to prophesy all plagues. All plagues. Because he is writing about them here, this particular chapter was written in 90 A.D. in April. In the month of April. God! John saw this great vision around 14 or 15 years before. He's had plenty of time to study and to pray before he puts it and obeys and writes it. God said, write it down. See to it that the churches get it. See that the church will hear what see that the church hears what the Spirit says to the churches. But you don't hear the church hearing the Spirit speaking. You know the book of Revelation is one book that's got a spirit of itself. You read it, I don't care who you are, you can feel. You may not understand none of it, but you can feel this ain't just a gospel. Have you ever felt, have you ever just flopped through the Bible, but when you got to Revelation, it's like tiptoeing on hot coals. How many ever knows when you read about boy, you just shout and enjoy, but when you get that book of Revelation, you start sort of walking softly. You feel something strange. So it said, I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy in sackcloth for the 42 months.
He mentions the 42 months twice here. Once in 12 and again in 13. These are the two olive trees. The two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. I want to leave this just a little bit right here. I want to go over here to the book of uh, Zechariah. And I want to begin reading at verse 1 of chapter 4. The angel that talked with me came again and wakened me as a man that is awakened out of sleep. Son of me, what see you? I said, I have looked. Behold, a candlestick and all of gold with a bowl up on the top of it. And it's seven lamps. They are on in seven pipes to the seven lamps which are on the top thereof. And the two olive trees by it, one up on the right side of the bowl, and the other up on the left side of the bowl. So I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Know you not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. He answered and said unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord under the rubble, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, who shall become a plain? Who shall bring forth the head stoned off with shouting, with crying, with grace, grace unto it? Over the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, and his hands also shall finish it. You shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you, who hath despised the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees? On the right side of the candlestick, upon the left side thereof. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which you, which though these two gold pots empty the oil out of themselves? He answered me and said, Know you not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole world. So you can see here, John in Revelation is lining up his two prophets with Zacharias. He's almost writing the same word. He said these two olive trees are the two anointed, the two prophets. Standing before the God of the whole earth. One on one side and one on the other side. I saw one of these holy men standing on each side is like a, a 
a world globe. The whole earth is going to feel the impact of these two anointed prophets. You notice John again saw the seven spirits of God. Who I believe these two holy prophets are. In a little bit, I believe you will. These are the two olive trees. Two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Again, John sees these two holy anointing, their ministry reaching the whole world. Not through television, but I'm talking about standing in the presence. Nations is going to be shut. Any man will hurt them. Far but see out of their mouths, devour their enemies. Any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Oh, this is super. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation and say, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah and Dothan and Ephraim. Moses rose up and went unto Dothan and Ephraim. Ephraim and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in their sin. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dothan, and Era, and every side in Dothan and Era, and out came out, stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own hand, mine, if these. If these men die the coming death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of men, then the Lord is not sent me. But if the Lord makes a new thing and the earth opens her mouth, swallows them up with all their habitats under them, they go down quickly under the bit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he made an end of speaking all these words that the ground carved asunder that was under them and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that obtained under car and all their goods and they all that was obtained to them went down alive into the pit in the hell itself alive and the earth closed them up on them and they perished from among the congregation all Israel that were around about them fed at the cry of them for they said lest the earth swallow us up also and there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that burnt incense this is the kind of ministry Moses had I said this was the kind of ministry Moses had. It was no hickey ministry. It wasn't it was no little bound pay ministry. And it was a ministry. It would shake the globe. Let, let's go here. Let's see what this ministry. Got a lot of reading to do. The Lord said unto Moses, See, I made you a God to pay road. And Aaron, your brother, shall be the, your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. Aaron, your brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh that he sent the children of Israel out of his, la his land. 
And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs, my wonders in the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my, my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. See, God didn't want Pharaoh to get by scot free. Pharaoh would have let him go at the first time, but God hardened his heart. God ain't going to let this generation off. Every time God starts to move, He hardens the heart. Every time revival starts to break out in this nation, God hardens the heart of the nation. Yet God will speak to the prophet to do a sign to convince the people, but yet He hardens the heart. Then why is God being so cruel? Well, if you're that naive and don't know, 400 years the Pharaohs have tortured and made slaves of the church. You can't get off scot free when all you have done, one generation after another, you have killed, you have tortured, and you have slayed God's people. God wants Pharaoh and Egypt to suffer for the sins of their forefathers. And when God brings to pass this great book of Revelation and these two holy anointed things, they're, they're going to make the world pay. Come on back to the time Cain killed Abel. This is a day of vengeance. It ain't going to be no witchy witchy. Man, we are fixing to face a time of trouble, of terror, when God brings ever sin of ever generation to reckon with them in this very book of Revelation. And these two prophets is going to bring it to pass. Man, this ain't going to happen with all of them. God said, I'll do nothing except I reveal my secrets to my servants, the prophets. Oh, I feel it. I said, I feel it. God said, when I get ready to deliver you, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart so much because every time I harden his heart, I'm going to bring another plague on him. I'm not going to let him repent. Oh, he's going to repent temporarily, but quick as you leave his presence, he, I'm going to harden his heart and make him refuse to let you go because he's, had, he's tortured too long. When you finally do go, they'll be glad to have you to go. But I'm going to punish them because they have punished my people. God's people have been punished. The early church was over 30 million. From the time of Christ and Stephen's death to 380, over 30 million perished. by the hand of the persecutor and by fire. Nero himself was burning as high as 5,000 bodies of the saints a day, burning them. He'd get drunk and he'd light up his, he'd make bonfires to light up his palace, his yard, and have his party with the bodies of the saints tortured. All of these old Roman emperors Nebuchadnezzar's and Belshazzar's, Medes and Persians, Pharaoh, they always was an antichrist, so to speak. They always made war and declared persecution and war against the Christians. Now God said, it's time for me to declare war against the earth, the whole earth. These two prophets is going to declare war and plague and famine and passionate and plague to the earth. Because now the whole earth is guilty. So you can see... what kind of... Prophet 
I'm fixing to get over here and read you a little bit of what's going to be happening in Revelation under these two prophets. And if you don't see what's happening here in Moses' ministry, well, look here. That was Deuteronomy 7. You need to read the whole chapter. Listen to this one. Deuteronomy. I mean, that was Exodus 7. Listen to 18. The Lord your God will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren, liken unto me, unto him shall you hearken. For in all that you desire of the Lord your God, and he run in the day of assembly, said, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. The Lord said unto me, They have well spoken, that they which have spoken, I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren, liken unto you. I will put my words in his mouth. He shall speak unto them all that I command him. It shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name that I will require of him, it of him, and the prophet which the prophet which shall pursue to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in my name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. If any, if you say in your heart, how shall we know the words which the Lord hath not spoken when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord? If the thing follows not, nor comes to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet which has spoken, it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him all from the deceit of his heart. He said, the thing that I'm going to speak is going to follow. Well, let's examine. Malachi. I'm not through with this Moses fellow yet. Even Stephen's here in Acts 7 referred to these great prophets. But let's go here. For behold, the day come that shall burn as an oven. All the proud and all that do weakly shall be stubble. The day come shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall neither leave them root nor branch. But in you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of their feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember you! <laughs> Remember you! The laws of Moses! which I commanded unto him at Heron for all Israel with his statutes and judgments. I just got a few reading to you what God commanded Moses and how fire, when they wouldn't hearken and keep the commandments, these two revelation prophets are going to be prophets that's going to teach the commandments of God. You know, since I've been a Christian, 40 years that I've been preaching, I've heard very little talk about the commandments and the Sabbath. Only in my ministry in recent months has God been awakening me to the commandments. Something's up. Something big is up. You can laugh if you want to. The book of Revelation, the faithful, the dedicated in Revelation Tell the commandments of God. Even in the last chapter, he said, Blessed are they that have my commandments and keep them. You first got to have them in your heart. You got to receive them in your heart. All oh, my commandments. Behold, I'll send you a light.
the prophet for the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He should turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I smite the earth with a curse. I won't get into that. Get my tape from the table on the two-part ministry of Elijah. This explains it. See, Elijah had a two-part ministry. How many has got my tape on the two-part ministry? It'll shake you up. See, John was Elijah in spirit. But when they come and ask, John, are you the Elijah that's going to come in Revelation? He said, no. Not the Elijah you're looking for that's going to come in the great and terrible day. See, the great and terrible day is Revelation. Not that prophet. I'm the prophet that's turning the hearts of the fathers to the children to be born, the church to be born. But in the last days, in the great and terrible day, the Elijah that's coming in the great and terrible day, he'll turn the children to their fathers, the faith of our fathers, which is Paul has begotten. But you have to get that tape. I explain all this too. God showed me a vision that Elijah had two ministries. He, he came. John came in Elijah's spirit. But not the Elijah that the Jews thought was to come, the Elijah to come in the great and terrible day. That's when he said no. He was Elijah and he knew it, but not the one they was looking for. He was the Elijah to prepare them for the new birth. But not the Elijah that Malachi has prophesied to come in the days of revelation when God unfolds and empty out the seals and the trump and the vials and the bowls of His holy wrath. This Elijah, John said, I'm not him. But he'll be on. Oh, this is great. Well, let's see what Jesus said about it. His disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? Jesus, said unto, Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah's come already. They knew him not, but they've done unto him whatever they listed. I wanted to. Likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer them. Jesus said, the Elijah to prepare the hearts of the fathers for the children, he's come already. But they didn't receive him. But you notice how he put this? Elijah shall truly come. Because he knew there was the second part of Elijah's ministry. And if you'll bear with me, you'll find in the third chapter of 2 Kings, where Elisha said, Give me a double portion. And Elisha received the double portion of Elijah's ministry, which was a type of the second Elijah. Elijah's spirit was in John, but the, get my tape on the Elijah, Elijah, Elisha. How many has got my tape on the Elijah, Elisha? I explain about the Elijah that's coming in Revelation. Yes, Elijah's coming. And Moses. Because these are only two Bible prophets that their spirit was taken and placed upon another one. I can prove to you by the Scriptures, Elijah was manifested through two others beside himself. Wasn't he? In John and Elisha. Hallelujah. Elijah, thank God, is coming in these last days in this great and beautiful book of Revelation. That's what John is seeing right here. He is seeing the Elijah. And he is seeing Moses. You got about 30 more minutes, I'll show you. Hallelujah. 
Kan suli heri mi Shaul ah. Go Lord. He said, well, I wouldn't believe it if it come. Well, that's all right. You believe when you get to when the plague hits you. It ain't going to make no difference. They come back from heaven or they come in the spirit. You need to worry about these little hickey Elijahs. Don't worry about when the real Elijah come, you fear. When the real Moses shows up, you need to worry about you won't believe them. You'll believe them. You'd be wishing David Terrell was back on the road. Our little old ministry has nothing to compare. He's, now, I want to show you. Look at Moses. Moses stood before the God of the earth. Look at Elijah when he faced Ahab. What did Elijah do? Restore Israel. Restore the lost tribe. That was what he was sent to. To restore the church. To restore the Israel of God. And he tore down the altars. Tore down the Baal, of Baal religion. You know, most of these preachers don't tear down idolatry. They don't tear down Baal religion, false religion. They go along with all religion. But a real ministry. You take my little old ministry. The spirit I am. I can't even preach unless I tear down false religion. People get on me all the time and say, if you just leave off these religions. But you can't do it if you're a real prophet. You can't do it. Elijah brought down. What kind of church we got today? I didn't hear you. I still didn't hear you. I didn't hear you women say nothing. When was Elijah sent? In the time of a Jezebel church. What did John say over in Revelation? You suffer that woman, Jezebel. To indoctrinate you. To teach you false religion. You've allowed that great whore to bring in false religion. And Elijah just told Ahab, the Lord God before whom I stand. Well, look here at these two prophets. Both Malachi and John said these two prophets of revelation in the day of the day of the Lord would stand like Elijah stood. These other little backboneless preachers ain't got that kind of guts. Well, y'all ain't. Y'all run around and claim you're prophets, but you ain't got that kind of guts. Women run around here want to be little prophetess. You won't stand up there to let the heavens close. Let the earth open up. Oh, you ain't going to do it. You know why? You ain't got the faith. You ain't got the backbone. I'll tell you what kind of prophets you are. Yea, I say unto thee, the Lord thy God would speak unto thee, and I would bless thee, saith the Lord, and the Lord would have thee to be encouraged. The Lord will richly bless thee. Bound praise, saith the Lord. <laughs> Nothing prophet. That ain't the kind of prophets that's coming in Revelation. And that ain't even the spirit of the prophets that's going to fall upon the true dedicated. It's going to be bold. And it's going to speak what the... It's going to be subject to the prophets. He said, let the spirit of the prophets be subject to the prophets. And they're going to be subject. Every one that's got this prophetic utterance is going to be subject to Moses. Subject to Elijah. Subject... You ain't going to go out here and build an old ministry. If you have any kind of a prophetic ministry, you're going to build on Moses. You're going to build on Elijah. Well, that's the only two. You better be building on them. You're going to shipwreck so far down, you'll never make it. 
And I said, Rena, you've always noticed my ministry. I've always built on Elijah. I've always built on a Moses. I've preached Moses. I've preached Elijah. That's been one thing I've kept before my ministry is Moses and Elijah because I know if I've got any kind of spirit at all, then it's the kind of spirit and I've got to build upon them. Hallelujah. Wake up. Wake yourself. Stir yourself. God couldn't put in to sin. You picking to burn this earth. Picking to open this earth up. Picking to swallow up man. Whole cities. Island. Mountain. Why is these two holy men introduced to you? The seals and the trump. Why ever mountain's going to move at their words? Famine. Why? High. Terror. You can't, I can't even ascribe to you the terror that's facing this generation. I'm talking about these 90s and if we go into 2000 if we make it that far. Man, there's nothing but hard ahead of us. Total doom and desolation to the earth. And earth people. There's no future. The only thing we preachers can do now is say, I'm going to go and do all I can and get as many souls saved I can. Get everybody to Jesus that I can. That's what He told me in July. He said, if you're going to win souls, you better win them now. This is the end. The end has come. The end. And the four score judgments. And you're seven more worse. As Moses said, God will bring seven times more worse plagues. What do you think he's prophesying? Revelation 7. You get in Revelation, you'll find his seven times more worse plagues. The seven seals, the seven trumps, the seven angels. Revelation 10. The seven last plagues. Of Revelation 16. And you tell me you don't know where God is. Well, listen here. Let's go a little further. These have power. Any man will hurt them. Fire proceed out of their mouths. I just showed you that. Well, you know, fire came down the start out of. Elijah's mouth, Ahab and his bunch, didn't it? I know this modern church, they couldn't be this because they teach that this kind of ministry don't even exist anymore. They say, God don't kill nobody. Well, who's doing all this killing? Who's doing all this killing in Russia? Russia is in a war with themselves. They ain't a war with America. Who's doing all, who's starving all these folks today? When God said, I'll cut off the bread stack. When God said, I'll cut off, I'll bring famine. I'll bring storms. I'll visit by earthquakes. I'll visit by storm. I'll, who do it is? God. But you hear this modern church, it's, oh, it's love and it's mercy. It was love and mercy. But now it's run out in the book of Revelation. These have power. These two witnesses have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over waters to turn them to blood. You'll go on and find out in this seventh chapter of Ezekiel of Exodus where Moses turned the water to blood. The Nile River was turned to blood. They even said we'll dig around it and try to find some springs. And it dug holes and it was blood. God said, I'm going to, in Revelation, under these two prophets, they're going to prophesy all plagues. Stop the water. Bring drought. The black horse is its loose. The drought is going to strike the world. Well, it's going to be a, a product of this ministry, of Elijah's. 
Moses. Well, Elijah closed the heavens for three and a half years. The double portion of Elijah. The Elijah Elisha. He closed the heaven for seven years. Man, don't tell me God's going to reach out and pick some of these modern church of God, modern charismatic preachers to be His prophets. God, you're crazy. You're stupid and sick in your mind. Well, he's going to pick out his two choice. God told me Moses and Elijah was his two choice prophets. These two revelations out of all God's many hundreds of prophets. Thank God he's picking them out two choice ones. <laughs> and taking their spirit of their mantle. Or he could even bring back or reincarnate them in somebody else. Manifest them. Or bring their bodies back. They never did find Moses' body. <laughs> huh? They don't know what happened to Moses' body. They never did find his grave. Moses disappeared. Elijah disappeared. Enoch disappeared. Well, maybe it's Enoch. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've been reading about Enoch. I don't know if you want him around now. And that guy, he was some something. That Enoch fellow. <laughs> Lord, if his spirit ever rubs off on me, you better hunt a hole. Or anybody else. My greatest belief is that it's Moses and Elijah. He's how proud of shut heaven because it, it, it's a symbol of their ministry. Enoch done a lot of prophesying, but Enoch really didn't do this kind of... I read his book. He didn't go out there and challenge the church. He just spoke of last day events like Jeremiah and Ezekiel. That's all he done. If any of you have ever read after Enoch, he just prophesied things that's coming. He said God will come in the flesh. Well, he did. Jesus. He spoke prophecies of that like Isaiah. But Elijah and Moses, they challenged for their prophecies. Jeremiah didn't. But these men stood up against nation, stood up against the false church, stood up against the gods of this world, stood up against false religion. Moses wouldn't tolerate idolatry. Elijah wouldn't tolerate idolatry. And these two prophets in Revelation are going to have to be that way because the world is full of idolatry now. They're going to have to have men of this caliber, men of this perseverance. Men with this quality. And I see quality in these two prophets. I see the quality of Moses. I see the quality of Elijah. Don't you? Man, I could just see Elijah incarnated uh, inside of him. I can see Moses. And you remember Moses said, the Lord shall raise up a prophet like me. And I can prove to you that when Jesus, but Jesus was a merciful prophet. Jesus never done these kind of prophets. It wasn't Jesus. Man, if you provoke Jesus, He didn't destroy you. He said, if you provoke this prophet uh, like an animal Moses, if you provoke Him, He'll destroy you. And I'm pretty good at that myself. I mean, you don't want to cross me. You better have me praying for you instead of putting a word on you. I told a fellow one time, I said, my word will chase you down. Where's a bunch of coon dogs after a coon? Ain't nowhere you can hide from my word. You know why? I know what I am. I know that, I'm, that I am sent to tell you these things. I may go on to be with the Lord, but you'll know that I may not. I don't know. God may favor somewhere 
because of my how been obedient to this prophet's minister never failed it and won't fail it lost been the biggest losers God might somewhere down the way just visit me and do as he did Elijah Elisha grant unto me the Elijah kind of spirit and if he did I guarantee I'll be faithful to it and if it comes to me dying in the streets like these I'll be ready for that too well, they done done everything to me but kill me. And I told myself, y'all better kill me while you got me. Because when I hit them streets, you're going to regret it. But I got word in my bones. God told me one time, said, your word will either save a nation or doom a nation. Can I have a few more minutes? I want to cover this because I don't want to have to get back in this. When I get to Revelation 11 here, I want to skip over it. These have power to shut heaven. You know this old modern term you talk about, parable. All they think about when they talk about miracles is healing the sick, making, getting, getting big names. You know, healing ministry give big names. But the miracles of Moses didn't give big names. Moses, over 3,000 miracles. Moses had over 3,000 miracles. I mean, over 7,000 miracles. Moses, over 7,000 miracles. There's very few healings. Turning the water to blood. <laughs> Bringing the frogs, the flies, the lice, the hailstones, the drought, the heat, the fire, the earthquakes. <laughs> Snake miracles. Moses. <laughs> Man could turn a stick into a snake and it bites you. A cobra. Boy, don't that remind you one? I'm going to mind to pitch it. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. It's going to happen one of these days. I said it's going to happen one of these days. And ain't nothing you're going to do about it. Man, that stick was turned into a real cobra snake. Now these are the kind of miracle these holy prophets is going to be doing. Because this ain't no time. For, in this revelation time, the harvest of sinners, the one that's going to get saved is going to turn quick. The sealing revival is only going to last about six or seven months. Then God's going to seal all nationalities, languages, and tongues. It's going to be the quickest revival the earth ever had. From the opening of the sixth seal to the sixth trump is only one year, one month, one day, and one hour. And five months of that was the, the locusts under the fifth trump. So you got to take that off. So you're only looking at a very few months that the angel from the east sealed the whole entire earth of Christ. God said, I'll do a quick work. What God is going to do in these last days, He's going to move in and do it quick. The days of the prophet. These have powerful waters to turn the blood to smite the nation. The earth, the earth, that means the whole earth, with all plagues as often as they will. We'll deal with these plagues, many of them in the morning, the four horsemen, but I want to read you a little here of some of this that these prophets are going to be prophesying and bringing on the earth. Now, where I'm reading now, 53 and one-fourth of the earth has already been destroyed by these two holy prophets that have introduced the seals and the trunk, the vials. Demonic. Folks, you ain't seen much ahead. Demonic armies. Demonic locusts. Demonic plagues. Not just a little fever epidemic. 
I'm talking about whole nations and whole continents perishing for demonic plagues. Perishing with all plagues. I heard a great voice out of the temple saying in the, to the seven angels of this temple that John has just saw here, which is the church, he saw it again. God is speaking out of the temple, not some temple over yonder. Oh, God will never speak from that temple being built in Jerusalem. False Christ made, but not the real Christ. Because he'll never allow the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet when they slaughter the lamb and start bringing blood sacrifice, which the Jews is going to start doing in about two or three years. God will never laugh. And that scares me to know it's that close. But 95 and less, they say they'll have this temple ready for worship. I heard a Jewish man on Pat Robertson program the other day. It's about two or three years from blood sacrifice. 93. Am I about right, Brother Mayor? And that's how close we are to the Antichrist. Jesus said, when you see the abomination, within two or three years, we'll see the abomination spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Blood sacrifice. After 2,000 years, a blood sacrifice has been stopped by Israel. They're going back to it. Man, it scares me. Y'all can cut that out if you want to. I don't, I don't rather Pat like that or not. But anyway, I heard it on Pat Robbins' program. saw this Jew talking about the temple. And they've almost got it finished now. I heard a voice speaking out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways. Now, who is this speaking out of the church? Well, you find in Revelation 12 during this 42 months, the church, the woman, is sustained by ministry. They who, the same they, the, they my prophets, my servants, the prophets, fed them. So here God is speaking by the voice of the prophets saying to the seven angels, Go your way. Pour out the bowls, the vials, the bowls of wrath upon the earth. The first angel went out and poured his vial, his bowl of wrath upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous So Now I will speak on this and explain all this by Scripture, but now I'm just going to read through it. You understand? I've not got time. It will take me an hour, hour and a half to, to preach about these seven angels. At the present, I only want to rush through here because I'm winding up this message. The first angel went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, his bowl of wrath upon the earth. There fell a noisome, a grievous, a horrible sores, grievous sores upon the men which had the mark of the beast, upon them which worship his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead man. Never living creature died in the sea. You see these two prophets? The third angel poured out his bowl upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became his blood. I heard the angel of the waters say, You are righteous, O Lord which art and was and shall be, because you have judged this. Talking about Jesus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgment. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him, to scorch men with fire. That's why we're going to seal the servants and the 144,000 in Revelation 7 
is when this happens, well, they won't be scorched. No heat shall light on them because of this very plague of this fourth angel. I'll explain that to you. And men were scorched with great heat. Blaspheme the name of God, which is Jesus, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give Him glory. Right back to these two anointed prophets. How power to bring all plagues. Now, what I didn't cover, when John was seeing their dead bodies, he wasn't actually seeing it. The present. He was seeing a future. What was going to happen in the latter part of the ministry. It wasn't at the time. They're still alive yet. They're not dead yet. They're still here. He was only seeing the future of their ministry at their final end was slaughtered, but not at the time He was giving us this here in Revelation. This was a future thing, which these plagues had not happened yet, see. And all of these things, they got to prophesy. So He was looking into the future. And he was writing what would finally happen at the final end God would permit the Antichrist to kill these two prophets only for His glory. Because in doing so, many are going to worship. Many are going to turn to Christ. When they see their dead bodies resurrected, many are going to fear God and worship God. The Scriptures say it. Maybe I should go a little further this. For well, they, men were scorched with great power. Men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which had power with these plagues and they repented not to give Him glory. The fifth angel poured out His bowl, His bowl of wrath is upon the seat of the beast. And His...